good day friends it is me hl mod tech and i am back with another awesome video so let's get cracking friends of course we're going to start by creating a new 3d design and a user ask for a chess storage set so i'm going to name the project chess storage and we're going to start by searching for what is called the soft box this little guy is absolutely magic when you bring it out you can type in the dimensions and instantly have a box to work with so i do not know the exact size of that user's chest set but i'm just going to show you how i would do this so i know that 15 centimeters is a pretty large size so i'm going to see if i can get this all the way to 150. bingo so that works pretty decent also i'm going to do 150 in this way i'm going to make it square and then for C, I'm going to use this as the bottom of the box, and I'm going to use it for the walls. So first, I'm going to make it 2 millimeters thick. And then if I do a wall of 80, 80 and 80 is 160, boom, it fills in the bottom of our shape, and it keeps these nice corners. Now, I'm going to tell you more than once, do not touch these handles. Those would break the parameters. That is a trick with using these is you've got to type your measurements so that it stays accurate. So that's the bottom of our box. Let's do control D. We're going to back up and hit the work plane, put it on top, and now click on either of those and press D to drop. And you can see that we've got two layers. Now for the second one, we're going to raise this up. So let's make our Z as high as we want. Let's say we want it to be 20 millimeters high. And we want the walls to be 2 millimeters thick. Just like that, you have got your box for storing things. Friends, with that in place, let me show you the walls. We can bring out the cube. You can pick your measurements. I'm going to put size 2 for the thickness of the walls because it matches that. And then I'm also, instead of 150, I'm going to type 148. Now you need this to equal 32. Let's do L for a line quick, get it to the middle and the middle. And you could build that however you wanted. You could space them evenly. There need to be 18.75 if you do 150 divided by the number of pieces you have. But chess pieces are not all the same size, so you could just build it the way you wanted it. Nudge them into place, get them exactly the way you want. Of course, we're also gonna do over here I'm going to do control D and I'm going to rotate it. Notice I'm staying inside the shape to get the 90 degrees. It goes 22 and a half degrees. I could also hold down shift and it snaps 45 degrees at a time. I'm going to take these chunks, do that L for a line. Notice I skipped these two because I didn't touch them. Make this the boss and boom. That's the start of your divided box. Now friends, I've got another trick I want to share with you though. Watch this. We're going to click and we're going to type grid. Now the grid gives us lots of cool things. We are going to use this one right here called a grid of square columns. It does have rules. It maxes out at 10 by 10, but we don't care because we want 8 by 4. It actually fits inside our project. We're going to make the size the max, which is 10. And we're going to make the gap 0.5. And I'll show you why in a second. We will make the height 20. Once again, we type parameters because otherwise it breaks these. But now, friends, we are actually going to break them intentionally. All right, friends, this is where it gets magical. Are you ready? This is 150 by 150. If we click on this and we do 146 by 146. I'm going to select all of that and do L for a line. Pick this as my boss. Choose middle and middle. And then if we make this go up to the top or even a little bit higher, click back on your yellow piece and give it that wall again of 80. Notice it fills in. And if you group those two parts, control G, we have just cut out our grid. How cool is that? So somehow it changed the measurements a tiny bit. We're going to double click to get back inside and just change our measurements again. 146, 146. They do need us to do a line. Easy peasy. L for a line. Pop 
pop. That one's already good. And let it regroup a second time. There is your instant, evenly spaced box for storing your chest parts. How cool is that? All right, friends, so it's likely you want a lid for this. Let me show you a quick strategy here. If we select the very bottom, and we do W for work plane, and we set it on top of one of those edges, duplicate and press D to drop. Now we're gonna make it so it overlaps. You can press this on. We're gonna change the number to 154. We're gonna change the number to 154 and 154. Let's select all that, do L for a line and get it back to middle and middle. You can see that overlaps nice on every side. Control D and we're going to do control down arrow one, two. So you can see that lines up right underneath it. And we're just going to make it so it has a wall of two or even something like 1.8. So there's a little bit of gap. You could also make this thicker so that it had a better grip. I'm going to change the color to blue so it's easier to see this. And then I'm going to hide this piece so you can see in. Check it out. That goes all the way around your shape and is ready to be your lid. If we do show all, I'm going to take those two if I hide these underneath. It's super simple to grab those and do control G. I'm going to change them to that blue just because I think it looks pretty sweet. Let's do show all, put the work plane back down on the bottom and we can hit T for transparency and you can see inside your new chess storage box or whatever kind of storage you want to create. When you're ready for 3D printing, I would just take this and move it to the other side, do D for drop, and then rotate it 180 degrees so it was printing with the lip up. Let's shut off that transparency so you can see that just a little bit better. If you want everything to be on the grid, notice you can click out here and you can change your measurements. I'm going to backspace and make that width 400. While I'm in here, I'm also going to pick a fun background color. I'm going to go with a tan or khaki, and I'm going to shut off that grid because I think this looks cooler after I close the settings. Shut off my transparency on this one as well. Friends, a viewer noted that I have these corners super sharp, and having that corner cut so sharp makes it a point of weakness. Friends, watch this. We are going to ungroup it. Click on just the yellow piece and do Control D. So we're just making another one of them. I'm going to make this one a wild pink just so that it's crazy different. Set the wall at two just like we expect it to be. Once it finally turns into that wall, I'm going to lock it. So now it cannot change. At this point, I'm going to grab everything but the bottom. And when we do Control G, we get that same cutout, but now those corners are back in place. Now I'm going to click on that pink one and I'm gonna unlock it. And now I'm gonna group everything, including the bottom. And we've got the rounded corners with the fancy walls of our storage container. <laughs> How slick is that? I also want to send a shout out to Graph Guy. Totally appreciate you checking out the video. There's nothing cooler for me than talented viewers sharing cool ideas. Friends, these steps will show the project with the bad corners, but of course you'd want to do this with your new rounded corner version. Let's get it ready for 3D printing. Export, and I'm going to do STL, just the selected shape. Or if you were going to print them all at once, if your printer was large enough, that's how you would do everything in the design. I always save mine to a special 3D modeling folder. This one will be the bottom. And then this one would be the top. Easy peasy. Friends, I do want to let you know that Tinkercad saves to the cloud. So as soon as you click this button, whatever you created was saved. It is right now private, but if you want to show the world, click up here on properties. Make sure it's got a name. Give it some sort of description. Mine will always mention that you can find a full tutorial at HL Mod Tech on YouTube. You can find that by tracking down my profile. You can also visit my website, hlmodtech.com. Below that, we can add some tags. This helps users track down things if they're using the Tinkercad search tool. And then finally, make sure you click public. And then I always choose 
attributions, no derivatives, because I'm hoping you come up here, find the tutorial, and gain some epic skills. Finally, tell them you're not a robot. Pass the CAPTCHA and hit Save Changes. Real quickly, let me show you how that works if we hit the gallery. It immediately takes you to the staff favorites where you can see all the amazing designs that the staff has chosen. This is one of my favorite places because you can click on the designs, check out the awesome images, even hit view in 3D, and of course, give them reactions. If we shut off the staff picks, I'm going to make the grid larger and you will be able to see everybody's projects that were just created. And of course, if you see something you think is cool, you can click on it and you can give it a reaction. That's fantastic. Of course, you can see our project right here. Check out this awesome one, though. It is a solar umbrella. What a great idea. Friends, as I conclude this project, I want to say thanks to, I think, Zane the Botanical Soap for the awesome question that got me started on this project. Friends, I do want to quickly remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. I've got the page dedicated to Tinkercad, tons of amazing categories, and then also day one lessons, useful starters, and Tinkercad essentials. Friends, there is also the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. I do also want to highlight the link to the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, we've got more than 700 members, and it is a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.